We start in southern Gaza, where Israeli forces have bombed tents housing displaced Palestinians. Well, these are the scenes at Al Najjar Hospital in Rafah, where medical staff are treating the wounded, some on the floor. Most of the injured are children. More than half the population has been displaced in southern Gaza following the forced evacuation orders and relentless Israeli bombing in the northern and central parts of the Strip. Well, for more on this, Hani Mahmoud is in Rafah in southern Gaza for us. And Hani, can you just tell us about the latest attack on the tent city? We understand that a kindergarten might have been hit. Yes, well, very sleepless and restless night for the 1.9 dis million displaced Palestinians in Rafah city as the Israeli military intensified its uh, bombing campaigns across the city. They included residential buildings as well as public facility and including the tent city. That's the eastern part of Rafah city where due to the intensity of the bombings of those residential buildings, the flying debris and shrapnels targeted and destroyed uh, as it fell on these tents where people have been sheltering since the beginning uh, of the war. But the, the heartbreaking part of this is that those shrapnel they flew in a very fast speed, hit a, a preschool facility where people have been sheltering since the beginning of the war and killed two little daughters, two little girls inside a, the, the facility that were rushed to a Najjar hospital. There were many people who were critically injured and those who were also reported killed in those massive attacks. We're talking about early hours of yesterday's evening all the way to just within the past couple hours, early hours of this morning, 12 hours of ongoing, relentless, massive air strikes and artillery shelling at the eastern part of Rafah city. It's important to point out that this is an indication that the talks that were made two days ago about expansion, the military operation in Rafah is in fact it's now effective, it's taking a place as we see this increase in the intensity and the, uh, the, the scale of the, mob, of the bombing of Rafah uh, city. It's just increasing the level of fear and panic among people here, particularly those who have been displaced more than one time as they don't have any other choice uh, to go to or safe a place to seek shelter or seek refuge. And, and honey, as uh, the Israeli military uh, slowly withdraw from the north, we're getting a better idea of the damage that has been left behind. Can you just give us a bit of an update on that and if any aid is getting back into the northern part of the Strip? Mm. Mm. Yes, well, the, uh, the Israeli military is uh, conducting these tactical withdrawals from parts of the northern uh, side of the Gaza Strip and uh, people have been expecting the, the sheer level of destruction caused to not only the residential buildings but also to public facilities and the infrastructure and just turning entire areas into a pile of ruins, creating very difficult conditions on the ground, restricting mobility and movement, not only for people just to walk, let alone those who are driving either trucks or, or cars. In terms of delivering a, a, a food aid or humanitarian aid to the part of the Gaza Strip has been very, very limited as the mechanism of, of aid delivery is, is largely broken given the conditions on the ground and because of the, 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 the checkpoints that have been set up on the roads, either Salahuddin Road or the other parts of the northern side of the Gaza Strip, just making it very difficult for the delivery uh, of aid. In fact, people right now are experiencing a great deal of famine in terms of shortage in the food supplies, the water supplies, and most of the water supply they're drinking is contaminated. But on top of that, the lack of, of medical supplies and survival items just make living conditions very difficult, all feeding into one strategy, making Gaza and the northern part very unlivable for people.